thank you prabhu for the super excellent class <clears throat> now you know if you trace back uh, to krishna consciousness coming into india we see that uh, uh, people who had this culture of being respectful to the elders and uh, who were trained in that particular way you know for them to take up to this process of krishna consciousness became relatively easier not to say that others did not take but i would just give make just to make the point that uh, respect was such an important aspect of our cultural upbringing you know even say 30 40 years back but now uh, you know because of this advent of social media and the lack of training to the new generation on this very important aspect of respecting elders respecting the others when they are you know making a particular point uh, accepting that without really you know even even you may have a disagreement but still you be respectful so this is all a part of the training that uh, we all got and you know we imbibed from our elders and unfortunately this is lacking in this uh, present day and age so uh, moving forward how do you feel that you know the preaching of our krishna conscious philosophy would need to take in order to you know get such people also into the fold of krishna consciousness okay so the culture of respect is increasingly being lost in today's world so how can we um, continue our spiritual outreach in such situations let me start from the opposite perspective that how so while respect is important sometimes this res- this the hierarchy of respect can become an obstacle i was just talking with one devotee scholar okay is he is a bhakti yoga scholar and he is he is appreciative of iskon so he told me that he came to a temple and he liked the philosophy and he said that this was in america and he he liked the whole he liked the chanting also everything he liked and he started practicing and he says one day he just came and he asked a question prabhu uh, can you explain this and suddenly the devotee next to him like literally slapped him he said you are committing an offense he's not a prabhu he's a maharaj now he knew nothing about it and this devotee was not even discreet in that he was like quite uh, quite uh, overt in that so he felt that uh, that you know okay this whole process seems to be very complicated so i don't know when i will do what wrong and he says because of that for 6 months he stopped coming to the temple see so my point is that sometimes the path of the heart bhakti is the path of the heart we may put such a power structure and hierarchy within that and somebody does one thing wrong now i would say it's also a problem not with the i'm not saying that the problem with the culture of respect but how that culture of respect is to be taught so this devotee that you are not respecting that maharaj he was making a point but he was not respecting this person when he was speaking that point so see the irony over there so you are not respecting but in that process i am not respecting you so what happens is the expectation of respect can become a problem hmm? it's not that there should not be respect but prabhu does prabhu pad say about humility to not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others so my understanding is that it's not that respect is lost no if you see even in today's world somebody who becomes expert in a particular field they are respected mm-hmm. it's not that uh, say if if you consider social media also no now it's not always true but if there is a particular video which has got a lot of views now some of them could be the artificial but quite often the content in that video is good if somebody does music which is good quality people appreciate it now i'm not saying that just the number count is necessarily an indicator of quality i'm not saying that but quite often if there is quality that is also respect r- respected but the difference is that with respect to especially the postmodern or egalitarian western culture is that respect cannot be assumed it has to be earned and that is a big problem in so, so if you see our movement wherever there is the hierarchical vertical culture 
in India, in China, in Re China, Russia, in the CIA states. Krishna conscious movement is flourishing. We are growing. Even in China, although Hinduism itself is not legal, but a lot of people are becoming devotees discreetly. But wherever that egalitarian culture is there, that hierarchical culture is not there, we are not able to reach out to a large number of people. So why is that? Because we go expecting respect. We assume respect should be there. But respect has to be earned. So yes, should elders be respected? His traditional culture is that, oh, you know, elders should be respected. But the contemporary attitude is, okay, just because you're older doesn't mean you're intelligent. Doesn't mean you're wise. So you show me your wisdom, then I'll respect you. So it is not that uh, respect is not there. But uh, of course, I'm saying, I'm saying that, yes, it is overall, the way respect was given in the past, it is not being given. And disrespect is also very much there. No, I'm not denying that. But to assume that there is no respect at all, it's not, it's not true. Respect has to be earned. It cannot be assumed. That's why, just because, that's, that's one of the difference, I didn't highlight the difference between say religious organizations and spiritual groups or spiritual people. Just so it's traditionally, even in India, if somebody is, say, wearing saffron or somebody is, uh, is a leader of a spiritual organization or in some influential position, that will bring some respect. Okay. But in the West, it doesn't matter. I'm not, by West, I'm not only talking about America. Basically, wherever there's egalitarian kind of culture. Okay. You have some post, I don't care. Show me your wisdom. If you have wisdom, then I'll respect you. So, religious hierarchy will not be respected. But spiritual caliber will be respected. But spiritual caliber, people cannot see that directly. They can see the position of religious hierarchy. But that will not give them respect. But if somebody actually offers spiritual, has spiritual substance, offers spiritual substance, they will, that will be respected. So respect has to be earned. And that is even among, see, in, among our teenagers, if you consider, they actually need guidance. But what they feel is that, you know, my parents or my elders are from a completely different generation. And what they speak doesn't make any sense to me. So if, if somebody gives guidance in a way that is sensible, they take it. It's not that they don't take it. Unfortunately, the, many of the people who make sense to them don't give good guidance. That is the problem. But if we can understand their way of thinking and then try to present it in a way that makes sense to them. So respect will have to be earned. Or I think Mark Twain, he said that when I was 17, uh, my father was a fool. Now I'm 25 and I'm amazed how much my old man has learned in the eight years. <laughs> so what happened is, that by the time he became 25, his own, he also became mature. So he started thinking, he started appreciating that wisdom. So it takes time. So if, I found that if we don't assume respect, but we act, as I answer questions politely, deal with people in, respect for, in, a, in, a, in a respectable way, then respect can be earned. Thank you very much. Grantharaj Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupad ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Itai Gaur Primanandi.